Hello, I'm Gil Zilka, and welcome to my channel. This is my series entitled Essential Classical Music, where we look at the best recordings of the major classical music works. This video is taken out of my larger video where I cover the major concerto recordings. And if you enjoy this, I hope you'll take the time to also watch that larger one. Uh, just know that you don't have to watch the entire thing uh, in one big long take. Uh, it is divided into chapters, so it's really easy to just click through and uh, view uh, whichever work uh, you're curious about. So I hope you enjoy it. Now let's talk about Rachmaninoff, a giant of the piano, both as a player and as a composer. Uh, and his piano concertos, particularly the second and the third, which are the ones we're going to talk about, are just staples of, of the repertoire. Again, a chance for a pianist who really wants to show his chops, uh, his virtuoso chops. And for this one, I have a pairing that I re I'm recommending for both the second and the third, which is really as close to a slam dunk as you can get. And that is Byron Yanis, accompanied by Antal Dorati. Uh, in the second, he's uh, accompanied by the Minneapolis Symphony. It was recorded in, in 1960. And not only are the performances amazing, but also the, the recording uh, techniques they used. This is the Mercury Living Presence uh, series, which had unbelievable vibrancy, brilliance, presence. It, it sounds like they're in your living room. It, it's just, I wish they made recordings like this still. <laughs> so the combination of all that with these concertos just makes for one of the great uh, concerto discs that, that has ever been made. Uh, Yanis just has amazing uh, poetry, uh, flexibility, uh, uh, artistic brilliance, and, and Dorati and the Minneapolis Symphony, enhanced, of course, by this um, wonderful recording techniques, uh, they, just really, uh, they just really sound uh, fabulous. So this is, for me, just a must. And it also comes with uh two of the probably his two most popular preludes opus number 23 number six and the opus three number two which that's one that you know one of Rachmaninoff's most, most famous pieces so this is just a, a great a great issue however like i said it's a it's a uh the Rachmaninoff uh, concertos are, are just a wonderful showpiece for a pianist so i'm going to start with the the single issues of the second and there are some other versions that you're going to want to check out one of them is a very famous one van Cliburn, the american wunderkind uh, accompanied here by fritz reiner in the chicago symphony in, in 1958 now this is not as famous as its counterpart part which we'll talk about later which is the tchaikovsky concerto but I actually like the Rachmaninoff even better. Uh, the, this interpretation of the, of the Rachmaninoff, it's very traditionally romantic, very grand, and, and Van Cliburn had that wonderful sonority he played with, which really lent itself to these, these, these huge concertos. It's uh, just a beautifully romantic interpretation and sounding pretty good. Uh, another Rachmaninoff uh, specialist, if you will, was Vladimir, uh, Vladimir Ashkenazi. This is with Andrei Previn and the London Symphony. This was recorded in 1971. And uh, this is uh, uh, maybe slightly uh, more, a little, maybe a little slower, a little bit less aggressively dramatic, more lush, uh, but very beautiful, uh, very immaculate, uh, but still powerful and recorded very well. So th this is uh, definitely one of your prime recommendations for the Rachmaninoff second, as is this version from 1965. This is Earl Wilde, accompanied by Yasha Ornstein and the Royal Philharmonic. Beautifully recorded, a uh, wonderful balance between the piano and the orchestra. And uh, this is just a really, uh, a, a, a very natural interpretation. Not, it's not extremely individual, um, but just a, 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 a beautifully romantic interpretation. Uh, Wild is uh, very powerful, but also very poetic, and uh, it's, it's great sounding. And incidentally, this gathers all four of the Rachmaninoff concertos along with the Rhapsody on a Theme of Paganini. So for that reason alone, it may, it may be worth uh, acquiring. Now for something that is a little bit more on the individual side, we have 
Sviatoslav Richter. And this is with Stanislaw Wislocki conducting the Warsaw Philharmonic, uh, 1959. And uh, this is a little bit more idiosyncratic. It's, it's, it's slower. Uh, but the thing is, the thing about Richter is he was a, a real individual thinking artist. And it, it's almost appropriate that he would take a piece like the Rachmaninoff Second, which you think of as a virtuoso showpiece. And he kind of slows it down and says, no, no, I want to make music out of this. And I think it really works. It almost has like this, this trance-like uh, effect, even though it's not as, as you know, overtly dramatic as we may be used to. So this is still a, a, a strong version as well. And then finally, we have to mention the composer's own. Uh, Rachmaninoff playing uh, with, uh, accompanied by Leopold Stokowski and the Philadelphia Orchestra. This is his 1929 recording. Uh, you can get all four concertos and the Rhapsody, uh, the, the Paganini Rhapsody, all together um, in various box sets with RCA. Uh, I have this this version, which just has the second, along with the Paganini Rhapsody. Uh, Rachmaninoff, surprisingly, maybe, uh, he he does not treat this as much uh, as a virtuosic showpiece as, as you might uh, expect. He, he's not as, as obviously... Uh, extrovert it's it's a little bit more held back a little bit more reserved um but you know wonderful artistic insights of course he wrote the thing so <laughs> and then you have stokowski in philadelphia there's that beautiful uh, uh uh famous theme that comes out in the middle of the final movement which they, they just play lushly and beautifully and for 1929 it's actually not a bad recording you can hear everything fairly clearly uh there's this part of the end of the middle movement that uh, these clar these uh, clarinets come in with these triplets. And it's actually f heard fairly well in this recording compared to even modern recordings. So, you, you, you know, you just never know. Uh, definitely a historic recording worth seeking out. Okay, let's now talk about the third. Ah, the third. They, they, they call this sometimes the Mount Everest of piano playing. Of course, there's the movie Shine about uh, David Helfgott, where a big part of the movie is about conquering the third, uh, or perhaps I should say being, being conquered by the third. Uh, it's, it's, su it's such a beast to, uh, to tackle. Um, I go back, of course, to my recommendation for the second, the pairing of the second and the third with Byron Yanis and Tal Dorati. Uh, in the third, uh, he is accompanied by the London Symphony, and this is in 1961. If anything, it's even it's even better than the second. I mean, they're they're both great. Uh, you just have everything here. You have a wonderful uh, recording technology, wonderful orchestral support. Uh, Yanis has the full measure of the music, uh, the virtuosity, uh, the, the the beautiful poetry. Um, if you want to hear the third, I, I just think you have to hear the Yanis. Uh, that said, there are also some other worthy versions of, uh, to seek out. Uh, one of which is the legendary Martha Argerich live recording from 1982 with Ricardo Chai. Uh, this is with the uh, uh, this is with the Berlin Radio Symphony Orchestra, and uh, Argerich. Uh, this is one of her most famous recordings uh, because not only do you have her virtuosity in, in the poetry, but maybe because it's a live recording, uh, it's a very personal, uh, very, very passionate recording. Uh, she actually slows, slows down uh, quite a bit in, in, a, in much of this, and uh, it, it's, it's a very heartfelt uh, reading as well as virtuosic. Uh, and it sounds pretty good. There's I mean, a little bit of noise maybe from being a live recording, but not, not too much. Uh, we also have uh, this one. This is a recording from 1995. This is with Grigory Sokolov. Uh, it's one of the few recordings that, that he made. And uh, this is also a very personal reading, uh, a little bit slowed down, kind of like Richter uh, It's in the, in the second. Uh, he, he's, he's sort of taking this and saying, okay, this is not just a virtuosic showpiece. I can do all that. <laughs> I have that power. I have you know the fingering and everything. But he, he also, he's very probing. probing. And very individual. Uh, it may not be uh, everybody's cup of tea, actually, for that reason, but it's it's a, it's a very strong version. Uh, we also have to mention uh, 
again, Earl Wilde, with Yasha Ornstein in the Royal Philharmonic. Uh, this is, again, I would say not, not terribly individualistic, the opposite of Sokolov. This one is more uh, sort of very natural, but it's very powerful, very, very beautifully played and, and accompanied by the orchestra. A, a very strong version, and again, a, a, a great set if you want all the concertos together. Uh, let's see, what do we have left for this one? We have, ah, we've got, uh, this one is actually a, uh, I think it's an early stereo recording, if not a mono recording. It's from 1955. This is Emile Gallel's accompanied by André Cluton and the Paris Conservatoire. Now, one thing about this recording is the, the, um, the uh, uh, recording itself is a little strange. The balance is a little off, so the orchestra is kind of recessed. They kind of sound like they're almost in the next room. So that can make for a little bit uncomfortable listening, but it's worth listening still to, uh, still for Galel's. You know, he has this amazing virtuosity uh, combined with his uh, artistic individuality and, and, and thoughtfulness. Uh, so that's a very strong version. Um, however, we have to talk about this one. This for me is is maybe the I know this is a strong statement. This may be the 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 greatest concerto recording I've ever heard. And despite the fact that actually the sound is, is really not that great. It's very hissy and noisy. But the performance is unreal. And that is Vladimir Horowitz, accompanied by John Barbaroli and the New York Philharmonic, live at Carnegie Hall, 1941. And this is just lights out. This is, uh, I mean, this is one of those things where you think it, it just, this will never be replicated. Uh, Horowitz was the supreme virtuoso for, for Rachmaninoff. I mean, everyone held him in awe. Um, he, he, there was nothing he couldn't do. It, it just seemed like just this powerful, massive sound, uh, amazing virtuosity. And then you have Barbaroli, who is, is such a, a passionate and, and inspired collaborator. Uh, you hear at the end uh, when they do the final the, the final ending, uh, someone just yells "Bravo!" and they, the crowd goes goes crazy, and, and you can't blame them because it really is that good. The sound is unfortunately very kind of noisy and dim, uh, but uh, you know you put it up with it for for a recording like this. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, uh, I hope you'll also take time to click the like and subscribe buttons. And with that, I want to wish you all a great day and happy listening.